Hello, I'm Hope Nearhood, Senior Manager, MS Information and Resources. Thanks for joining me for the first of four modules in our Introduction to MS for Fitness and Wellness Professionals course. In this module, I'll provide an overview of multiple sclerosis, define what MS is, and what happens in MS. By the end of this module, you'll have a better understanding of who gets MS and what causes MS. We will also explain how MS is diagnosed, and describe the types of MS and the many MS symptoms. This module will lay the foundation for our later discussion on MS and exercise and physical activity. You will see a list of additional resources below this video, including links to information on our website that expands on these topics. We encourage you to review what is provided as the test at the end of the training will reflect some of this information. The first part in understanding MS is to understand the central nervous system or CNS and how the immune system attacks the CNS in MS. The CNS makes up the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves. MS is an unpredictable, potentially disabling disease that disrupts the flow of information within the brain and between the brain and the body. MS is an immune-mediated disease, that is, a disease of the immune system. MS may be considered an autoimmune disease, in autoimmune diseases, the immune system mistakenly attacks healthy cells, organs, or tissues in the person's own body. The primary site of the attack in MS is the myelin coating that surrounds the nerve fibers in the CNS. The myelin sheath wraps around the fibers that are the long, thread-like part of the nerve cell. The sheath protects these fibers, known as axons, a lot like the insulation around an electrical wire. The immune system also targets the axon and the cells that make myelin, also known as oligodendrocytes. Although scientists are still working out the details of the immune attack in MS, the basic steps involved appear to be as follows. The immune system protects us from and fights infections. The immune system is called to action if bacteria, viruses, and or parasites enter the body. In MS, the immune system malfunctions and reacts to cells and tissue of the CNS, causing significant inflammation and damage. The blood-brain barrier consists of specialized blood vessels that restrict many substances from entering the CNS. In MS, activated immune cells cross into the central nervous system through the blood-brain barrier. Once there, those immune cells cause inflammation and damage to myelin, nerve fibers, and the cells that make myelin. This damage interferes with smooth transmission of nerve impulses, leading to the symptoms of MS. Lesions or scars form in the areas of damage. Myelin sheaths are the sleeves of fatty tissue that protect your nerve cells and their axons. Myelin insulates the nerves that carry messages back and forth between your brain and the rest of your body. This illustration shows the steps involved in the damage to the myelin and axons. The yellow segments represent the myelin coating. This shows one area of myelin that has been damaged. The immune attack also becomes directed toward the axon itself, and the axon here is severed. Myelin has some ability to repair itself, and the potential of myelin repair is an area of intensive research at this time. Once the axons are damaged, however, they cannot be repaired. This diagram tells us that when a person who is genetically susceptible encounters an as yet unknown environmental trigger, the autoimmune response is initiated. It is this autoimmune response that causes damage to the central nervous system. A 2019 National MS Society-led study confirmed that nearly 1 million individuals in the United States have MS, almost double the number previously thought. MS is usually diagnosed between ages 20 and 50, although it can be diagnosed in young children and older adults. MS is more common in women than in men at a ratio of approximately three or four to one. MS occurs in all ethnic groups. MS was previously thought to be more common in people who are white, but recent research suggests that the risk for developing MS for individuals who are black, particularly black women, is greater than that of whites. And MS is not as common in the Hispanic, Latino, Latinx, and Asian populations. MS is also more common in areas further from the equator. 
There is no single test that can determine if a person has MS. A healthcare provider, typically a neurologist, will assess medical history and perform a neurological exam. Other tests are done to provide support and to rule out other possible causes of the person's symptoms. The process for diagnosing MS is one of exclusion, where other possible causes are eliminated. The current criteria for the diagnosis of MS requires evidence of damage that occurred in different places in the CNS at different points in time. There must also be no other explanation for the symptoms that are occurring, such as infections or vitamin deficiencies. MS symptoms vary from person to person and within the same person from day to day. There are multiple symptoms that may impact exercise, and we'll discuss this more in depth in a later module. Right now, we will review some of the most common symptoms of MS. A few symptoms that may impact exercise are shown here and include memory, difficulty thinking or processing information, also known as cognitive problems, emotional changes, vision issues, dizziness and vertigo, and bladder and bowel symptoms. You may also notice your clients with MS have problems with balance and walking, sensory symptoms such as numbness and pain, heat sensitivity and fatigue. Spasticity, which is tightness or pain in the muscles, can occur in the legs and sometimes in the arms as well. An additional symptom called foot drop is common in MS and occurs from muscle weakness in the foot, causing the toes to touch the ground before the heel. This can lead to tripping and loss of balance. You will also want to visit the MS symptoms page linked in the additional resources section below to learn more specifics about common MS symptoms and other less common symptoms. There are four different types or disease courses that have been defined in MS. The first is clinically isolated syndrome or CIS, which refers to a first episode of neurologic symptoms that last at least 24 hours and are caused by inflammation or demyelination in the central nervous system. CIS may or may not go on to become MS. CIS accompanied by MS-like lesions on MRI is more likely to become MS than CIS without lesions on MRI. The second type of MS is relapsing remitting MS or RRMS. This is the most common form of MS. About 85% of people with MS are initially diagnosed with RRMS. People with relapsing remitting MS have temporary periods called relapses, flare-ups or exacerbations, when new symptoms appear, followed by complete or partial recovery. Relapsing remitting MS typically worsens over time and can transition to secondary progressive MS or SPMS. In secondary progressive MS or SPMS, symptoms worsen more steadily over time with or without the occurrence of relapses and remissions. The final type of MS is primary progressive MS or PPMS. This is a type of MS that is not very common, with an initial diagnosis being about 10% of people with MS. PPMS is characterized by slowly worsening symptoms and disability progression from the beginning, with few or no relapses or remissions. Now that we have provided an overview of what MS is, next we will talk about levels of ability and wellness in MS. 